on a blue planet. Over 70% of the Earth is covered by the sea. From space, our ocean appears pristine clean. Unfortunately, it is not. A new study found that coastal border countries produce over 2.5 billion tons of waste in the year 2015. That's more than 100 pounds of new plastic for every man, woman, and child on Earth. But in the United States, only 7% of plastic is recycled. The rest ends up in landfills where it could remain for more than a thousand years. Other plastic is carelessly discarded and goes from stores to storm drains, streets to streams, and eventually floating out into the sea. Ocean pollution is the introduction of harmful contaminants throughout the norm for human ecosystems. These man-made pollutants that might go into the ocean every year include things such as herbicides, pesticides, chemical fertilizers, detergents, oil, sewage, plastics, and other solids. In the 1950s and 60s, the plastic industry not only transformed manufacturing around the world, it fundamentally altered the way people use and dispose of everyday products. Most plastic products are made from petrochemicals and are durable, lightweight, water-resistant, and inexpensive to produce. With this information, we decided to take a trip to Miami Beach and investigate several beachgoers and ask them what they bring with them on their trip. Food, drinks. And uh, drinks in what? Like plastic water bottles? Sure. Plastic, uh, aluminum. And sunscreen? <laughs> yeah. And water bottles? Uh, bags. Water bottles. bottles. And the little plastic, the three plastic things for cans. Yeah. You bring straws like bottles or cans? Yeah, but I've, I've never met them. You always saw them. I always, I always bring them back, so I just leave them with all my trash. Throw it in the, in the trash. An estimated 8 million tons of plastic entered the ocean because of poorly controlled waste sites illegal dumping, and mishandled waste from the population. At sea, abandoned rope, nets, floats, and other waste from fishing ships and cruises are furthermore contributing to marine litter. Since we wanted to know more about how ocean pollution affects the sea environment, we asked Dr. Piero Garnelli, an expert on ocean toxicity. I think as humans, we have been able to change the ocean as a whole. And uh, again, I'm gonna pick up plastics as, as an example. Uh, because it's something that we all see. The fact that we have giant areas in the ocean where there's floating plastic around that they just move and they stay there and they don't go anywhere. It's a very good way of showing people that we have affected the, the sea as a whole. Up to 80% of the plastic in the ocean comes from land-based sources. Once at sea, the floating garbage is caught up in the tides and currents. These currents run along the California coast and converge with four other prevailing currents from the Pacific Ocean. When they meet about a thousand miles off the coast of California, they create a slow swirling vortex known as the North Pacific Gyre. As the currents come together, they carry with them trash from all around the world. With most of the plastic being broken into tiny pieces, the garbage patch cannot be seen from air. Much of the debris is floating a few feet below the surface. Scientists don't know the exact size, but estimates place it to be twice the size of Texas. Since plastics in the ocean degrade into smaller pieces from the effects of sunlight, oxidation, and from the abrasion of waves and currents, it's often to the point where they're no longer visible to the naked eye. Marine animals from plankton to fish consume microplastics, mistaking them for food. However, microplastics are not only the result of deterioration of large plastic fragments at sea, Microplastics are also manufactured to be microscopic size to act as possible scrubs and personal care products. Some examples even include toothpaste, face soaps, body washes, makeup, lip gloss, and nail polish. Pellets used in plastic manufacturing also make their way to the sea through poor management or accidental loss through transport. Not only does ocean pollution affect marine life, but it affects life on land as well. Believe it or not, only in recent years have we begun to act this swarm pollution, so there's come so much improvement as of today. Plastic debris takes a tragic toll on marine life. Birds and fish ingest it when they mistake brightly colored pieces for food. Sea turtles and migrating birds can even become entangled in abandoned plastic fishing nets. Your typical bird would be there trying to eat something, right? And most birds don't know the difference between a piece of plastic and a piece of food. So, uh, some birds eat it, you know, and they, they make it sick just by the fact that they're eating it. It's 
so you will think that a plastic straw is harmless, you know, it's just a piece of plastic, but uh, the, the right size of plastic in the right size of organism causes a lot of trouble. The consumption of plastics and microplastics by marine organisms may add persistent, chemical-inducing, toxic substances into the aquatic food chain. What might even be increasingly concerning is that it could affect us. After doing a survey to discover which pollutants are harmful to our oceans, we concluded that oil at 45% and plastics at 35% are the most damaging, followed by the other hazardous substances of sewage at 10% and chemicals at 7%. Presently, most scientists agree that it is not feasible to clean up the plastics in our ocean, and our efforts should be focused on tackling the problem at its source. It is also too big of a problem for any one country, organization, or agency to address alone. Like the scientists stated, we went straight to the source and asked the beachgoers if they participated in any cleanup. Um, no. I work full time, I'm very busy, I don't volunteer for the ocean cleaning project, sorry. I do not, right now. No. Okay, you don't volunteer. At all? No. The truth about pollution is that many of the problems go ignored. And while the awareness of ACU hand is present, we tend to overlook the outcome of our actions. With the information gathered, we should encourage behaviors and actions from producers and consumers to reduce the amount of generated waste, reuse to extend the product life for as long as possible, and recycle whatever cannot be used anymore to give it new life. We need to be a little bit more attentive to what we are doing as inhabitants of this planet. So, there's no reason for anybody to dump a piece of plastic in the ocean. If you're in the beach and you bring a cooler with, you know, a six pack with plastic rings, uh, don't leave it there. Take it home, okay, and put it in, in your trash at home. If you see a piece of plastic that is misplaced somewhere, just pick it up and put it in a trash can. There's a better chance that it will get removed. Still, the size of the challenge is daunting, and any solution involves all of us. I believe it is on each one of us to make personal changes in our everyday use of products and how we dispose of it. Having a strong global partnership will amplify these efforts to help save one of our planet's most valuable resources for not only ourselves, but for our future generations. Our documentary's main focus is to make every individual take part in helping our oceans, even if we just start with an I will. I will recycle. I will not litter. I will donate. I will help. I will keep the oceans clean.